Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. So last episode, we were kind of messing around with our portal here, trying to make it so it was automated. Uh, we were wanting to be able to put some Terra Steel in there and get the Elementum out, right? And we were seeing that some of the items were being lost. So I ended up changing this from an automatic dropper or an automatic dispenser, whatever it was, to just a vanilla dropper. And then I changed what's going on behind it. So directly behind the dropper, we have this block here with a comparator. This comparator will be able to tell when there's any items inside that dropper, it'll emit a redstone signal. Uh, that redstone signal will turn off this torch. And when this timer right above it has a redstone signal below it, it stops, right? So by default, this torch is on, which means the timer stopped. So when there's items in there, it'll turn the comparator on which will turn this torch off and allow this timer to tick. And this timer just puts some redstone out on some redstone dust over onto this block, which is directly behind the dropper, which allows things to be sent through. So we can see that if I grab, I don't know, how about some cobblestone? We just put that in there and that'll just shoot right through the portal. Cobblestone doesn't do anything, so it just gets eaten by the portal. So I guess that's a way for us to destroy cobblestone if we really want to do that. But yeah, as we put items in there, it automatically gets shot out. So again, if I put like Terra Steel in there, we'll see every two of them, we'll get some Elementum back. Now, it's not quite as fast as what we had before, but it seems consistent. And that's the important thing. When we auto craft something that our items that we send out gets the items that we expect back every time. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're pretty much good here. I got a torch back here, so like nothing can spawn. I think we're good. I'll go ahead and button this back up and we can move on. Okay, so we have that all done back there, which is fantastic. And we left off last episode making some wyvern cores, had those queued up. And those are now done. I left the local game server running. I was only going to leave it running for a couple of hours, but turns out I left it running pretty much all day yesterday. So... It went for something like, I would say, 12 to 16 hours. I was like, oh, whoops, I forgot to turn that off. Anyway, I don't leave the server running all the time. I pretty much turn it on, play the game, record, and then turn it back off. I only have it there for instances like that where we want to leave it running in the background and I can do other things on my computer while that's happening uh, without using my graphics for the client. Anyway, we have the Wyvern cores now. And that's the important thing. And the wyvern cores were for making the philosopher's stone. So let's go ahead and add those to our recipe over here. So we have this one and that one. So now if we get rid of this, the only thing that we are missing are those two black hole talismans. Yeah, we got a good portion of everything else. That's awesome. So now that we need the black hole talisman, let's take a look at this. So each one of those requires six, or I guess uh, three elementum plus some ender air. Do we even have ender air? Ender air. We do. Awesome. So if I wanted to make this, we have everything except for the Gaia spirit. So that means we have to do the guardian Gaia fight. Aha. Uh -huh. So something that I am curious about, since we're going to spawn that boss in, we've seen before with other bosses that we can uh use the woot farm on them so i am curious if we can use the woot farm to farm gaia spirits yeah because if we don't have to do that manually that would be awesome uh well i guess if we don't have to fight it manually for each one of these guys spirits if we look at the recipe for it let me click off this there is no recipe for it but the use is for it um petal apothecary so we can make some different flowers and I think there's some other things. Yeah, we're gonna need Gaia Spirit Ingots. This is for the tier two Gaia boss. And we look at for the uses for that. That is used in the Insanium Ingots. So we're gonna need quite a bit of that to make Insanium. Alternatively, we could also make a Gaia block, right? And then the Gaia block, I think we can use the Wand of Animation to make a whole bunch of those as well. But before we get to that point, I do wanna see if we can uh, use a woot farm to automatically do the Gaia boss. I don't know if you can or cannot. So, um, first thing we need to do, we need to get ourselves a beacon. Beacon. 
And like that. We don't already have one, do we? We all oh, we have 12 of them. Why do we have 12 beacons? I don't remember why we made beacons before. <laughs> uh, we made those for something. Or maybe we got them as rewards for something. I don't know. Well, anyway, we have some beacons here. We need the beacon in order for us to do the Gaia fight. And we have to make an arena for that as well. So, um, the beacon doesn't have to be activated, but does need to have uh, iron blocks. Block of iron. We need nine of those. Pretty sure that's part of the structure. And then we're also going to need the um, pylons. We need the Gaia pylons. So each one of those requires us to have two elementum plus two pixie dust and a mana pylon. Mana pylon is this recipe here. I don't think we have any mana diamonds. Let's just go ahead and make a bunch. You know, our mana has been filling up uh, very nicely. Now that we're not trying to make all of the Terra Steel, like all of our mana is just full. Yeah, our slime farm's working really good, and then our upgraded mana spreaders and all of that. So we can freely just come through here and do a stack of mana diamonds. We want to do a stack of mana pearls as well? Sure, let's go ahead and do that. Why not? I guess I didn't do the diamonds. Let's finish those up. And those, there it is. Yeah, we can easily do that stuff. No big deal. And then our mana pool down below is full, so now that's kind of refilling these two. <laughs> Uh, so we can do all sorts of nice stuff now that we have all of this mana. Okay, so we wanted to make ourselves, um, the nature pylon, which means we need the mana pylon. We actually need four of these, and then we want this, which is the mana pylon. So we need pixie dust. So this is another thing that we can do for automation. We can set up our dispenser over there and make our pixie dust for us. We might as well do that since we set up the automations, right? Um, so this, let's see, it was this one, pixie dust, that. So one mana pearl equals one pixie dust. Do I have these yet? Pixie. I don't. So we got to do the first one ourselves, and then I can set the item collector down there to specifically target those. So I need a pearl. Cue that in there. And then we'll come back over here. Grab this real quick and set a filter and then place these blocks back. Awesome. Okay, so now we should be able to automate this process and be able to make pixie dust whenever we need it in the future. Uh, so we'll come down here and then we need to find, I guess it's just called dropper because I haven't renamed that to anything. It'd probably be better if I renamed that to portal, Gaia portal, elven portal, whatever. Okay. Well, anyway, let's do some pixie dust. We need two of those per pylon. Let's just try crafting two of them and make sure this all works. There's one, there's two, perfect. All right, so our automation is working flawlessly so far. Okay, so we wanted to do this. Should we make a recipe for that? I guess we could. So we'll make a recipe for this. We'll make a recipe for these, even though we don't need any more of them. And then we'll just throw those in here somewhere and just tell the system to craft up all four of them. So here's one, here's that, and then pylon. We want four of those. Do it, please. So there's three and, and maybe, uh-oh, what happened? Pixie dust stored one crafting one. Are we still having issues with the portal just nomming items? What is going on? Um. Yeah, there is nothing in that dropper. Man, I thought switching it over to this setup would make it like just work, but apparently not. Hmm. Okay, well, there's still issues here. Maybe being able to fully automate this is not a thing we'll be able to do. Huh. Well, that's kind of disappointing. Well, let me just grab another pearl. I'll throw it in here, and things will just work. What happened? Okay, let's try that again. Uh, mana pearl. Did I not throw it in there. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on, right? So the mana pearl, the uses for this, 
elven tree turns into a pixie dust. I'm throwing a pearl into the portal. I don't have my dislocator activated. Mm. That worked that time. So it feels like something is... Yeah, look at that. Okay, so we have pearls in here. Oh, is this item filter down here set up incorrectly? Maybe that's the problem the entire time. So maybe we want... Maybe that was the problem that like these all or dictionary or something to the same thing and it was ignoring it. Maybe that was the problem the whole time. Okay, well, if that's the case, then my mistake, the other setup probably works just fine. Oh boy. Well, at least we got something going here. <laughs> well, the auto complete, the auto recipe is now finished. The auto crafting recipe. Okay, well. That's too bad if that was the case. That was my mistake for the setting being wrong. At least I got to play around with a little bit different redstone methods. Okay, well, anyway, we got to figure out where we're going to do this Gaia fight. Um, we have an open area here, but I don't know if it's big enough for it. And I don't know if I want to permanently have this be the spot. But I tell you what, I'm going to figure out where we're going to do the Gaia fight. We might just do it underground, like in the basement area. Anyway, let me do that. We'll get the Woot Farm thing set up so we can attempt to uh, Woot Farm this, and we'll be right back. Okay, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Guardian of Gaia, in the Lexica Batania, after you throw the book through the Elven Portal, you get this section. Let's get back here. Uh, Alphamancy, and then it has the Ritual of Gaia. So if you scroll over to this page here, you can visualize the multi-block layout, right? And you can place that wherever you want to. Uh, I ended up placing it in the ground one, so the beacon was below where this will allow me to place it. And then we have the iron blocks below that, so I'll get rid of the visualization. Okay, so this should be set up, provided we have the space requirement, which I'm pretty sure we do. Yeah, we're just gonna fight this underground here. I don't think that there's gonna be any, like, damaging things that happen, at least I hope not. And even if anything damaging does happen, there's really nothing here in particular that would get destroyed. Now, anyway, uh, what we need to do now is grab a Terra Steel. Let's grab one of these. And then I grabbed an Ender Shard here so I can right-click the mob and then see if we can root farm it. So we should be good. Let me go and do a Shift-Right-Click. Uh, as hard as you try, the beacon will not accept your sacrifice. I believe the ritual grounds might be improper. It might be a good idea to check the obstructions. Um, so maybe it doesn't like the torches? It might be the torches, or maybe it has to be up one level. Let me do this one more time. So it doesn't like that. Yeah, you know what? It's got the red in these blocks. I think I do have to move this up one block. Let me do that. All right, well, that gives me the structure complete message in green, signifying that I have done everything correctly. I just moved it up one block. I'm pretty sure I've done it before in the ground like that, so you're not running into things. Anyway, well, I didn't like it. Let's try it again. There it is. Oh, boy. Uh, music and sound. Let's turn this down a bit. <laughs> That's a little loud. Okay. Uh, already a torch is gone. Maybe I, maybe I broke that. I don't know. Well, anyway, I want this guy. Is that programmed? It says I'm programmed. So maybe you can't program it against this guy? Okay. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and just wreck its face with our really powerful sword. Where'd it go? Uh-huh. Oh my goodness, it keeps putting, like, the stuff on the ground that's, like, poisoning me. Alright, uh, our hunger is fine for, like, the next two minutes, so I don't really expect we're gonna have much issue here. There it goes. There it is! Awesome! So, the fight does destroy torches, apparently. I don't know if there's, like, little random explosions that are doing that, or if it's just where the mob warps to that'll destroy them. Okay, so we got lots of garbage in our inventory. Let's get rid of, like, loot bags. I don't care about skeleton trophy or bones or this kind of stuff. Ooh, we got a skeleton soul. That's kind of nice. I don't think we have very many souls at this point. Graves dust, XP, gold armor, rotten flesh, 
Yeah, we got so much stuff from those mobs. Zombie heads, zombie hearts. What was that? Repellent 4? Okay. Um, so yeah, it didn't look like we could program the shard, which is interesting. I would have expected that we should be able to do that, but apparently not. All right, so it sounds like we have collected everything that was on the ground. Uh, is there anything else around here? Doesn't look like it. All right, so we ended up getting ourselves eight Gaia Spirits, which is awesome. So that will allow us to do the tier two fight. So what we need to do is take a tear steel and then wrap it with this stuff. And there's the Gaia Spirit ingot, right? So with the Gaia Spirit ingot, we can redo the fight in a tier two stage, which will give us a lot more of these Gaia Spirits every time we kill the boss. Now that's pretty much what we want to do. I'm going to try on the tier two, the Ender Shard again. I feel like we should be able to do this, but maybe you just got to manually fight them a bunch of times. I don't really know. We'll find out here in just a little bit. Just trying to clean up the inventory ever so much more. Take another one of these. Okay, let's do round two. Slightly different song, I do believe, right? All right, so this guy's a little bit tougher. But I don't think we're going to have any problem, especially with our crazy powerful sword that we have. Okay, so now that we did all that, we have Wither 3 effect for just a few moments. Okay. I'm going to put some of these away. I know we got storage space. There's just so many drops that you get from this fight. So many monsters. Well, I guess the, the biggest reason is we have uh, looting 20 on the sword and that's not even its final form like there's still that sword that we saw that we can get looting 50 on right so we got 10 mana pearls from that fight will all right let's put this stuff away here and let's trash some of these things that need to be trashed don't need this stuff okay so we ended up getting five mana diamonds we got 10 mana pearls we got 16 gaia spirits um, we got Dice of Fate, the Epic Shader, don't care about. We got a Black or, or a black Lotus, and don't care about that or that, or those. Okay, so Dice of Fate. This is one of the special items you get from the Tier 2. When you do this, you get a specific item. So we got the Fruit of Grisania, I guess. Uh, this uses mana, so you can just eat this thing over and over, and it essentially uses mana for food. Not something that we're going to use in this playthrough. So we'll just put that away. Um, so we have a will of whatever. Craft with a Terra Steel helmet to add the following effect. Critical hit damage increases with lower HP. I mean, that's pretty cool for Batania itself, but I don't think that's something that we're going to be worrying about in this playthrough. And then we have the Pinkinator, so you can turn the Wither Boss into a friendly monster. That might be something we all look at. I don't know. And then Scathe Music Disc, yeah, so that's the Batania fight music. And then, again, we got the 16 Gaia Spirits, so that's pretty cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and fight this, I don't know, a few more times, I suppose. Might as well do that, collect a bunch of these Gaia Spirits, so we don't have to worry about this again. We are going to need a full block to be animated later on. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just fight this a bunch of times. We'll be back. Okay, guys, so I fought it a few more times. We got four more Dice of Fate, so let's pop these open. So, a Ring of Odin. That's actually a really good ring. I think that's the one that gives you ten more hearts, right? I think. Can I put this anywhere? Does that have to be in a specific spot? Yeah, so the Ring of Odin gives you ten additional hearts. That's really cool. Okay, so we got a lot more health now. <laughs> uh, let's pop open another one. Eye of the Flugel. Uh, let's turn the music and sound back up. Okay, so this, I don't remember. I think this is so you can, like, set a... I feel like you can set a, a warp point, so, like, if I right-click on this, it'll warp me right back to that spot. But I think you have to have mana for that to work. Anyway, uh, so that doesn't matter. We'll do this one. Ring of Thor. Awesome. Uh, and then finally, we get ourselves Key of King's Law. Again, these require mana. I don't have mana. This thing is really fun. Uh, I like playing around with this every time I get this in Batania. So really, we need to get ourselves a uh, tablet. 
Do we have a man mania tablet? So we need to get ourselves a tablet here. We'll fill this full of mana real quick and we'll just check this out for just a moment over here. I don't know if any of these mana pools are set up to extract mana. I don't think they are. Put that there for a second. Yeah, that doesn't... S oh, actually, you know, it was. Okay, let's turn off the dislocator. We'll put that in there. We'll grab some more mana real quick. Okay, so this thing... I think the mana tablet works if I have it on me. Oh yeah, that seems to work. Haha! <laughs> so I have all these weapons. And if I point right here and let go of it. <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. So all of those weapons are at my disposal and they'll go attack whatever I tell them to. <laughs> I like it. Oh, that's so good. So we can try, I guess, their Eye of the Flugel if I hold and right click. It warps me right back to this point that I set earlier. So this is, I think this is single dimension. I don't think that works cross dimension. But yeah, you can choose like a point to warp back to and then use this to always warp back to that point, which is pretty cool. But we have other ways of warping around. Anyway, so those are some of the things. I don't remember Ring of Thor being like super, super useful. So we'll put that away. Um. Anyway, so we have ourselves 64 Gaia Spirits now, plus an additional Gaia Spirit Ingot, which is awesome. So we wanted to make ourselves two of these Black Hole Talisman. So we need six more Elementum. And hopefully, now that we change the uh, item collector to be the correct way, it's just going to work every time now. <laughs> Still not sure if that was the case that they were collecting the items before it went through the portal or if the portal was eating them, but I suspect that it was the case that it was just being collected before the portal could use them. Uh, so here's our black hole talismans, and we will put those right here, and nothing happens. Why not? What the heck? I clicked that button and then things worked. Why? What? I'm not sure. Something moved. I don't know what moved. Anyway, we have everything in here now, which is fine. Um, I guess I had something in the wrong spot and then clicking that button fixed it for us. So here's our Philosopher's Stone. Whew! That's taken a minute to get. <laughs> All right, so now that we have the Philosopher's Stone, let's get rid of this and get rid of that. Pink Matter is one of the things that we wanted to work on to get to this Energy Condenser. Yeah, we're going to need this Pink Matter. So also we're going to need Orb of Light, which doesn't look like that's really that difficult to do. Anyway, pink matter. Let's make some recipes for this so we know how to do it and see if we even have the stuff in our system. Um, so that is made this way. So there's pink matter. And then we're going to need to know how to make the eight ether analysis fuel. I think that might be how you pronounce it. Not entirely sure. Um, no, you know what? We're just going to leave it like that. I might have to go through here and change some of these recipes, but it's fine. I don't really want them all or dictionaried. Alchemical coal is made with four coal and that. Okay, so now we should know how to make all the way to the ether analysis fuel. Um, so magenta matter is made with that plus red matter. Let's do this recipe. Okay, and then we need to know how to make red matter. And that is made with dark matter plus this fuel. My goodness, so much of this coal is going into it. All right, so now that we know that, dark matter? So dark matter is made with supremium coal. Goodness, so much coal in this recipe. So now we have a recipe to make dark matter. So supremium coal. Pretty sure we don't know how to make any of those. So now let's go ahead and get down here. We'll bookmark that. I don't remember if we made a recipe for the diamond wafer. We'll take that look at that so that is a superium coal plus essence. Oh boy, so many recipes. So there's that one. And then we need this one followed by the orange one and then the green one. 
And then the light green one? The Inferium? Did, did I do this one? or did, I don't remember which one I've done now. I assume that's all the recipes. That looks like it. Okay, so now we know how to get to that stage. Do we know Diamond Wafer? We know how to make Diamond Wafers. Alright, so the question is, do we have space <laughs> to put these auto crafting recipes in here? Well, it looks like we got some space here. So let's line these up like we do. So they're all color matched. So we know that we have every single one. Okay, so those are all in there. And I guess we'll just throw some of these in this uh, line with the apples and down here. That should be just fine. So now, if I wanted to make, let's just say one pink matter. Do we know how to make everything? And do we have enough stuff to make one of them? That is the two questions that I have right now. This is very intriguing to me. Uh, I know there's a lot of coal that's going into this, but we should have a lot of coal in the system. Oh my goodness, all of the crafting, the calculation, it doesn't know what to do at this point. So I waited well over a minute and that recipe was still thinking about it. It couldn't figure out what to do, so I canceled it. So I'm looking at this and I'm just trying to make the very first basic alchemical coal, right? So if we want to make one alchemical coal, it says four coal available, one philosopher's stone available, get you one alchemical coal. If I want to make two of those, now it's saying that we have one philosopher's stone available, but we're missing one. We have eight coal available to make two alchemical coal. So we have a problem here. The system doesn't know that they are getting the Philosopher's Stone back. I don't know why that's the case. Um, this recipe to make alchemical coal is very similar, right? That recipe is very similar to something like making something with the Master Infusion Crystal. So we take a look at the Master Infusion Crystal if we do like pretty much any of these recipes, which we've done before, the system knows that it gets this back and it can craft this with only one. I'm not sure why it's having a problem with the Project E Philosopher's Stone. So in my mind, I think we should probably do a different type of auto crafting. We should do a, um, a processing pattern and use maybe like how about the RF Tools Crafter Tier 3? Do we have we ever made one of those? We have no, oh, we do have a crafter tier three. Do is there a recipe set in here? No. So we can set a bunch of recipes so it can do that with the Philosopher's Stone for us. And I think this actually goes faster for that kind of recipes. So if we grab the Philosopher's Stone, we can put that into here. And then I will remember that. So it will only go into that slot. Alright, once we Get rid of all these other slots, it'll only be able to sit here, which is fine. That's where we want it. So we have the Philosopher's Stone there. So now I gotta go through and do all of those recipes again. So if I do Project Coal, yep. So now we need to know how to make all of these things again. So if I click here, I don't, can I shift click into that? Oh, I can. Okay, that's pretty cool. I've never done that before, I don't think. So you want that to be set to uh, internal recipe, so it's going to craft this item, and then I'll keep it internally, it won't put it to the export. So we'll internal craft it, all items and input slots are consumed, keep one item in every inventory slot. No, that's fine. And then, yeah, we should do this real quick. So I'm going to apply this recipe here. We need to give it some power, we need to get this thing set up. So let's do a spectry coil, this one's fine, just to get us going here. And then I need four coal. Okay, so as soon as I put coal in here, it'll automatically turn that to an chemical coal, so I'll remember that spot. Okay, so now that we know how to do that, we can click this button and then do the next one. So the next one would be this Mobius fuel. Okay, so it's the same thing, it just needs four of those alchemical coals. So we wanna do all, and we want to do internal, and we will apply it. Cool, so now, when we craft the Mobius fuel, it'll appear here. So I need to get myself 12 more coal. All right, so if I put the 12 coal onto here, we should get four of those, and then it makes the Mobius fuel, and we'll remember that. Okay, so now we got a spot for that guy. 
So the next one after the Mobius fuel, that was the Ethernalis or Ethernalis or however you pronounce it. Make sure we click on the right thing here and then we'll do that again. Back over to this one. That all. Uh, I think we're going to set that one to be external. Now, we could set it to external for these other two. I don't know if we need these for anything in particular, but I do know we need these for other recipes. So we'll do that to an external recipe. Okay, so now that we have that set all external, that's going to put it to the output slot out here. We'll click apply and then we will just throw in a bunch of coal here and there we go. Um, so I don't want the philosopher's stone going to the external slot. Uh, result of the crafting operation will go to the output buffer, but remaining items like buckets will stay in the input. So I think that will keep the philosopher's stone in here. That's what we want. We don't ever want that going to the output. Let's try that again. Let's grab like another stack of coal and throw that in here. Okay, so yeah, the philosopher's stone stays and then the ether analysis fuel gets put to the output slot. That's exactly how we want that to work. So now that we have this set up, we need to change our crafting patterns so they know how to do this, and then we can use this as our auto crafting. All right, guys, well, we got the Philosopher's Stone set up, and we saw how to do some auto crafting with it. Unfortunately, we can't just use it in the Applied Energistics auto crafting, but it is what it is. It'll save us some, I guess, some inventory space in our auto crafting setup. But yeah, we are out of time for today. So then we're going to go ahead and end it here. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.